Hey, what's going on guys? Arex here. Welcome back to another video for Cyberpunk 2077. And in this one, I want to talk about weapons. In today's Night City Wire episode number two, as well as talking about life paths, they also gave us a deeper look at weapons and gear. Of course, in Cyberpunk, weapons are broken into a variety of different categories. You have your guns, you have melee weapons, and of course you have cyberware. But they spoke more specifically today about the guns. They spoke about some of the different types of guns, some of the modifications. We did, however, also get a look at some of the cyberware. So I thought in this video, we'd wrap all of that up and go over all the most important bits. So if you guys do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. If you guys are hyped for Cyberpunk, then make sure you stick around because we've uh, already been doing plenty of videos and we plan to do plenty more. So uh, definitely turn those notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. But to begin with, one of the first things we actually got to look at was our weapon locker. We've seen inside these apartment before. However, this is one of the first times we've had a proper look inside the weapon locker, which kind of, you know, I don't exactly know how you narratively speaking get to it, but it almost has that kind of hidden behind a bookcase kind of feel to it. So that would be kind of cool, sort of Ghost in the Shell vibe, like just hide your weapon locker in your room. Anyway, that to one side, we're going to look at some of the weapons, how of course you can pick your gear, things like that. Not entirely sure whether the interface we saw here is actually in-game interface or whether it's just kind of motion graphics specifically for the purpose of the trailer because that much I didn't get to experience when I played in-game myself. But either way, seeing some of the weapon types here was incredibly cool. Of course, they did take this opportunity to show off some of the weapons and also show off some of the cyberware. We've seen most of this before, but it was nice to kind of get a, like a really good look at three particular cyberware items. We've seen the Mantis Blades before, of course the blades that come out your arms and you can use that to slice through enemies. We've seen the gorilla arms which I just love because that's basically being like a big old strong hulk and you can use it to like rip guns off of mounted turrets and carry them just makes you big and strong and there's also the projectile system which is kind of like a rocket launcher hidden in your hands. Very very awesome. Also one thing worth noting they showed a very kind of small snippet here of the katana gameplay and it seems like they've improved it sort of since the last time we saw it. I know when I spoke about katana gameplay before some people said it looks a little bit stiff and when you kind of look at them side by side it definitely looks like they've made some improvements or maybe this is just the fact that V is more proficient with the weapon now so it looks a lot smoother. Anyway that to one side of course we then have the main weapon types you have your power weapons your smart weapons and you have your tech weapons so power weapons are most similar to contemporary weapons that you would find in other games the main difference however is that these can also ricochet bullets so while you can use them more conventionally and they'll feel very familiar to other games you would have played before having that ricochet nature does of course mean you can you know occasionally get people behind cover you then have your tech weapons, which use electromagnetic power to propel fully metal projectiles. And these are actually really good for armor piercing. So heavily armored enemies, vehicles, that kind of thing. And you then have your smart weapons, which can be used to track enemies in real time. So you can literally shoot around corners, shoot behind cover, fire in the completely wrong direction, still hit your target. They've basically made them for me because I just can't aim in video games. Anyway, that to one side, they then went on to speak a little bit more about how your progression works throughout the game. Because obviously as you play the game, you earn experience for the types of weapons you're using. You may have seen this in some of the gameplay, like when you're playing through passively, you get experience on the side of the screen. And there's a really important design decision behind this because this is supposed to also mirror V's journey. He begins the game as your bog standard mercenary, doesn't really have much standing, doesn't have much experience. He's just kind of, you know, run of the mill, like thrown into the beat of the game. And then of course, as you progress throughout the game as you get more proficient as you get stronger your weapon handling and the kind of your weapon behavior is supposed to reflect this as well so as you do start earning experience and getting used to those weapon types then you'll get things like you know for guns specifically faster reload speed better aim down sights better weapon handling that kind of stuff so if you then look at say a v at the beginning of the game versus a v at the end of the game just simply by using weapons you will physically be more proficient which is actually quite cool you know kind of mirrors your journey to becoming that all-important person in uh, Night City. Of course, when it comes to obtaining weapons, weapons can be purchased from vendors. There are whole suites of weapons you can purchase from them, but they did say the best weapons in the game come from enemies or loot caches. And legendary weapons will possess unique abilities. Obviously, if you've played other games before, this is hardly surprising. However, one of the interesting things they did say is that when it comes to obtaining legendary weapons, players will need to make tough choices to obtain them. And this may even involve killing certain characters. One of the examples I experienced was of course doing the Maelstrom mission where you recover the spider bot. If you kill the enemy that you're doing the deal with, he has a unique pistol, a legendary pistol that he drops. And of course, if you didn't kill him and you went about your way, you wouldn't get that so they did say that sometimes there will definitely be situations where you know there might be a character you like but you're like well if i want to get his weapon it's kind of gonna have to go in the ground so uh 
how do we make this choice? So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think about that? Like, would you would you do what it needs to be done to get your weapon, or are you gonna like? Does it depend heavily on your friendship with this character? Anyway, that to one side. Tough choices are definitely a thing. But when it comes to mods, obviously this is something we haven't seen too much in game. But they spoke about the two main types of weapon mods. You have attachments, which is things like scopes, silencers, that kind of thing. All attachments are visible in game, so you will see them reflected on your guns, and they will provide you with statistical changes. Meanwhile, you then have software mods, which are installed inside the weapon, so naturally speaking, you won't see them, and they change the stats of the guns again, but these are more things like damage, accuracy, fire rate. Some of them can even change gameplay, like giving you non-lethal rounds or bio rounds to burn through armor. Non-lethal rounds are incredibly exciting because obviously if you caught my video the other day, the one that I dropped yesterday, I spoke about an interview where they said that a non-lethal playthrough of the entire game is possible. You could literally go through without killing anyone, and now we're beginning to build a better picture of that. We obviously know you can melee characters but now we know that you can outfit your weapons with non-lethal rounds we're beginning to understand slightly better about how we may go about doing this so that is pretty exciting but for the time being that's pretty much it that was a quick look at the weapon stuff they showed in the live stream if you guys have any more questions by all means let me know in the comments down below and again be sure to keep it locked for plenty more cyberpunk coverage Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys wanna chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.